met Gus in third grade. We were eight years old. A close family friend passed away that year, and I remember I got to sit crying on the big comfy beanbag chair all day by myself. And Gus just kept coming over to me to make me laugh. He was the only person to cheer me up that day. I wish he was here right now cheering me up. By fifth grade, I was in love with him. We were so young. He was just so cool from the start. I mean, I've never met anyone who's colored their hair more times than me. <laughs> Middle school came and we stayed friends. I remember he'd go on for hours making fun of the guys I dated. But no matter what he was saying, I couldn't stop laughing at it. Gus was able to do that. He was so funny, he would make you laugh so hard you wouldn't realize he's been making fun of you for the past 10 minutes. <laughs> He'd make me laugh until I'd cry. I don't think it's physically possible to shed more tears for anyone. High school came and we went back and forth breaking each other's hearts. We'd date for a month and he'd hate each other for two. But he was always there and he always reassured me how much he loved me. Even if he was pissed at me, even in the hardest times when I thought no one was there, he was. He was just always there. Senior year came, and he finally showed me some public affection. He was never too good at that. He kissed me in front of a whole party. I remember thinking, wow, we're really going to be in a real relationship this time. It didn't happen immediately. But eventually, he moved to California after high school. And so did I. He was in L.A. I was in San Diego. He was living with Brennan with no job or money at all, eating only the Trader Joe's canned beans Liza would send him in a box from New York. <laughs> I went up there every other week with my two-week pay of $100. I was working for my sister. Let's just keep that in mind. I think the train ride itself cost about $70. <laughs> I'd have to steal food from my sister's house and bring it up so we didn't have to eat those beans. <laughs> I think he wore the same, same pants every single day that year. And for some odd reason, it never grossed me out. He'd step out of his pants that were literally molded to his legs. <laughs> they were so stale, they would stand up straight. <laughs> and I never even flinched. I mean, that's true love, if you ask me. He eventually moved back home to Long Beach. I think it took him, took me maybe two months to run back after him. I might, have, might as well have just immediately moved all my stuff into his tiny room because I don't think I slept in my own bed more than 10 times that year. I was glued to him. I hated working. I didn't want to be away from him, which was pretty strange because we did absolutely nothing but sit in his room every day. <laughs> I'd watch him smoke the clips people left at his house the night before <laughs> because either he didn't want to leave his house to get weed, Ian wasn't around, or he had no money to buy it, which was usually the case, but he never worried about that. He always knew he'd have all the money he needed one day. He always knew he'd be something more. And I can truly say I don't think anyone who really knew him ever doubted that. He had to start kicking me out of his house so he could record. He would tell me he couldn't sing in, sing in front of me until he was famous. And then it all started to change. It started to happen. He started to have a fan base, girls started commenting on his pictures, and I started freaking out on him every other day. <laughs> but no matter how much we fought, he wouldn't stop telling me how much he loved me. We'd break up and the next minute I'd get a text from him saying I love you. He made it so hard to ever be mad at him. He'd tell me, no what, matter what, Emma, you're always my family. And I didn't really know what he meant by that until now. I'd get mad at him and say, I'm not your freaking sister, Gus. I'm your girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> but now I get it, because I feel like I've lost the closest thing to me. <sighs> but you know what makes it feel a little better? Knowing he's right here by my side. <laughs> Knowing how much he hated to see me cry. Listening to his voice sing me to sleep. And knowing how much he loved me. I think he told me that enough times for all of eternity. 
but I still can't help but wait for the day I get to see that smiling face. Tell me how much he loves me one more time. I don't think anyone could ever forget a smile that big. Gus, I don't know if this will ever get easier. But I know with your guidance I can make it through. We all will. There's an empty hole in my heart. But with every single beat, I can feel you shining through it. You are my soulmate, and souls never die. You live through me. He lives through all of us.